Growing up, my parents always taught me to do the right thing. As a little kid, that meant being nice to others, doing what your parents told you, helping older folks, and treating new people like friends. Doing the right thing was easy when I was little. Doing the right thing can sometimes be a bit challenging when you are growing up, though. Before we continue, please like the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you will be notified when I upload the next video. In school, for example, there can be consequences for doing the right thing. You might become less popular with your peers. You might get into trouble for pointing out when something is wrong to a teacher who thinks things are just fine the way they are. Like all things in life, what was simple as a six or seven year old can require more navigation when you are a tween or teen. Not to mention when you become an adult. I learned this lesson many times in school and with different results and lots of questioning of myself. I also learned how murky the concept of the right thing can become when our personal interests are at stake. It all started when I was in seventh grade. At this age, I thought that I knew everything, just as our parents told us when we were in seventh grade and beyond. I did not. On this particular day in seventh grade, I arrived in school, stored my stuff, and took my homeroom seat. I noticed that Risa, a girl in my homeroom, had dropped her books all over the ground. I quickly got out of my car and helped her collect her things from the floor. My parents would say that I was doing the right thing, and I will be honest, helping Risa made me feel good. As we went to the first period, I noticed Blake, who I would have many issues with until I graduated high school, shoving a sixth grader out of the way, dumping the kid's stuff all over the hall. I stopped to help the boy collect his things and apologized for Blake's rudeness. Then I went to first period. In that class, we had a quiz. Chuck, a friend of Blake's, grumbled about having a dumb test and then said to me, you were going to give me the answers. I just looked at Chuck. I was surprised. I had never cheated at anything. And up to this point, I had never been asked to assist in a cheating scam. No, I said, shaking my head. My parents would have a fit if I cheated. What was that? Chuck asked. I'm not going to help you to cheat, I said. I can help you study, but you can't copy my answers. Only nerds study, Chuck said. I shrugged my shoulders and said, Nerds get good grades because we study and we work hard. And if I let you cheat, I could get in trouble. Cheat off someone else. And then I filled in my answers while hiding my paper. All the while, I felt the spitballs that Chuck was tossing at me when the teacher wasn't looking. When I finished my quiz, I handed it to the teacher and then turned to Chuck and said, Knock it off. Then I went about the rest of my classwork. As I left the classroom to go to the next period, Chuck walked by elbowing me as he passed. Watch it, I said. You're going to get it now, pal, Chuck said. Nobody's going to talk to you when they hear what I have to say. You should just move to another school. I kept walking. I had no idea what this kid was going to tell the other kids, that I did not let him cheat. I wondered, did I make a mistake? I didn't think so. Cheating is wrong. Everyone knows that and did so then. Cheating gives some an unfair advantage because they don't follow the rules. Cheating is dishonest, so why would I lose friends for not letting someone cheat? As the day passed, I thought about what Chuck said more and more. Chuck threw spitballs at me in my third class, and my friend Trey was sitting next to me. What is his problem? Trey asked me. I didn't let him cheat for my quiz in first period, I explained. Now he is telling me that I should move to a different school. What? Trey asked. My mom said that if I ever cheated at anything... I would be in more trouble than I ever knew was possible. I believe her, too. And our parents have always told us that cheating is wrong, I said. I thought I was doing the right thing. And our parents always tell us to do the right thing, Trey said. I guess that Chuck's parents didn't tell him about that. I guess not, I said. What are you going to do if he doesn't stop? Trey asked. I guess I will have to tell someone, I said. Yes, my parents always tell me that if I see something wrong, I have to say something or else it won't get fixed, Trey said. My parents told me the same thing. As Trey had suggested, Chuck continued to bother me. He threw spitballs, nudged me as he was walking by, called me names, the usual things that bullies do when things do not go their way. I was so happy when lunch finally came that I couldn't contain myself. I sat down with Trey and our other friends, including my best friend Alex, as we ate and chatted, I finally started to forget about Chuck's constant harassment. 
My friends and I laughed about our classes and talked about our little siblings and sports and all the other things kids talk about at lunch. Then Brittany, a girl who was friends with Blake and Chuck, came over to our table and handed me a note. It was folded in half. Opening the letter, I read, Soon. What does this mean? I asked Brittany. She shrugged and walked back to where she had been sitting. I showed the note to my friends. They all thought it was strange. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I walked over to Chuck, carrying the message. What is soon? I asked Chuck. I don't know, he said laughing. You sent me a note. I just want to know why, I said. I don't know, Chuck said again. You were doing this because I would not let you cheat off my paper, I said, now feeling annoyed. If you had studied and done your schoolwork, you might not have had to cheat. Please stop bugging me because of your own choices. You gonna cry? Chuck smirked. No, but I will make you stop, I said. In my next class, I again felt spitballs hitting my back. I was feeling frustrated now. I just wanted Chuck to leave me alone. Knock it off, I said to Chuck. This is the last time I'm going to tell you. Oh no, Chuck pretended to be afraid. Just tell the teacher right now, Alex said. And so I did. I handed the teacher the note from lunch and told her the entire situation, starring with Chuck wanting to use my quiz to cheat. The first thing that she did was alter the seating chart, sending Chuck to the other side of the room. Then she sent both Chuck and me to the principal's office along with the letter. Mrs. Bark, the principal, told Chuck that if he had been caught cheating, he would have been expelled from school. She also said that since I had prevented him from cheating, I did him a favor. Miss Bark also explained that if Chuck continued this behavior toward me or anyone else, she would consider expulsion. She also informed us that both of our parents would receive phone calls from her after school. After that, Chuck didn't seem as aggressive. He pretty much ignored me or giggled with his friends. That didn't bother me at all. I was nervous about what would happen when I got home though. I really had nothing to worry about. My parents were actually proud of the actions that I had taken. They praised me for doing the right thing. In truth, back then, I didn't understand why they applauded me for doing what they had taught me. Now though, I do. As an adult, I know doing the right thing is not always popular and that how we handle the aftermath of doing the right thing is also a big part of doing the right thing. I hope you liked the video. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thank you. Hey, thank you for watching. Please click on the right to subscribe if you liked the video. And please don't forget to click on the bell icon when you subscribe so that you can be notified when we upload a new video. Watch more videos on the left, including our playlist. Thank you.